Hi there. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about some of the most exciting trends that I believe are the most fascinating that I've seen in recent years in the field of geographic information systems. They all have to do with what I call crowdsourcing your field work. And they have two main components. One, I've got some field data that I've collected and I want to easily map it and analyze it spatially using a GIS. And number two, I want to be able to do that in a volunteer geographic information context or VGI or crowdsourcing. Same kind of thing where I've got a number of people out in the field collecting data and we all want to see our results in one final map. How do I do that? How do I do both things? How do I map my field work and how do I combine my field work with others? These, I believe, are quite exciting in the field of GIS for a number of reasons. They're impacting the planet and its people in positive ways. So I'd like to dig into that with you tonight. Now, please get a hold of me if you have any questions or wish to chat about any of these topics. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, all the major social media outlets. I write a blog for a number of different um, uh, services, including uh, the Ed community at ESRI for the Green 360 Green Gurus Environmental Careers blog and also for Spatial Reserves. So you can find those things online. But get a hold of me. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Well, before we get into some of, I believe, uh, the most exciting trends are, well, let's just step back for a moment and talk about, well, why do I map field data in the first place? Well, we want to map field data to manage the data that we've got. The geography provides, geographic information systems provide a way of, uh, for us to, to manage our data uh, spatially, also to help us visualize data, and also to help us understand data. You know, maps have been used for thousands of years to understand geographic phenomena and uh, no different nowadays except what I call geographic phenomena is uh, also in the field of uh, biology or business anything that has to do with a geographic component on under or over the landscape so it could include weather or surficial geology uh, ocean currents and so on and so forth and number two I believe that it's important to map field data because you're building key skills and not just the techie part not just the geotechnologies piece but also in decision making and, and spatial thinking, critical thinking, and much more. You're building skills there that will serve you your whole life long. So those are a couple reasons why I believe it's important to map field data. Now let me just touch briefly in the span of time that we have here uh, together uh, at the moment uh, to talk about seven ways to map field data in the GIS cloud. I'm going to focus on, clou uh, on cloud-based GIS specifically with ArcGIS Online, which I believe is a, a great ma manifestation of GIS in the cloud because it's got data, it's got software components, software as a service, it's got tools, it's got services, um, and so on. And so it's really becoming this mapping platform that's enabling us to make better decisions about our planet. So I'm going to go through all these seven ways to map field data in the GIS cloud with you. So let's start with via local files and spreadsheets. Now let's say you've got a local file on your computer, on your laptop, on your tablet. You've got some sort of local file. Uh, it may be in a spreadsheet form or a text file, plain old text file or a comma separated value file. So you've got some data. It's got some sort of latitude, longitude, city state, city country, uh, zip code or postal code or street address component. In other words, a geographic component that you can map. Well, in the old days of GIS, it was sort of a cumbersome process or clunky process to actually make a map of that data. Now it's actually quite easy. So for example, I've got this data set. I brought two layers of information, just regular old spreadsheets. Uh, one of car washes in Oklahoma City, the street addresses of those, and then I wanted to map those to look at the patterns. And I can see that these car symbols on this map show that car washes, as expected, as you might hypothesize, are along major arterials. In this case, Oklahoma City is nice because it shows the major arterials mostly being section line roads at one mile uh, intervals. 
And then I also wanted to map the bail bond surfaces. Are they clustered or are they just as spread out as car washes? And the bail bonds actually exhibit a, a, a semi um, tendency, anyway, to cluster. And that is, as expected, around the Oklahoma County Jail, where there are more needs for bail, bail bond services.